I started as a full-time environment reporter back in 1988. Climate change was still a pretty new idea back then, and governments would say, we can't really tell what it's going to mean to this place or that place because we don't know enough about it yet. 29 years and billions of dollars later, they're still singing the same tune. Can't say too early. Well, we wanted to find out for ourselves, so we talked to experts in climate, human health, agriculture, and asked what is climate change really going to look like in the coming decades? How different will our world be in 50 years? Let's start with water. Meet award-winning and internationally celebrated scientist, John Small. But most people, when they think of climate change in lakes, they think of ice disappearing in Canada, maybe less time to go ice fishing. But there's lots of other things happening under the radar blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. It causes all sorts of taste and odor problems. They look terrible. They're hard to go fishing in. We're moving the summer longer, and that's exactly what they like. Warm water and calm, stratified water. And by that I mean lakes tend to divide into three layers in, in summer. The colder water is heavy, so it sinks to the bottom. And what you do is you get this stratified lake. You can probably feel that if you go swimming and you're treading water, you feel your toes are very cold. That's because you've gone into the cold, heavier water, denser water. Blue-green algae or cyanobacteria that cause these problem blooms, they love those conditions and they're going to be coming more and more in the future. So we know the health of our lakes is at stake, but how much warmer is it going to get? Let's take Ottawa for example. Today, the annual mean temperature is 6.4 degrees Celsius. By mid-century, this will rise to 9.6 degrees, and by the end of the century up to 11.9 degrees. This means summer heat waves that kill, and warmer, unpredictable winters. That is a problem for people like Ellie Renault, a fifth generation farmer. Come on! Well, if you have a winter that isn't normally our winter would be, it would turn cold, it would stay cold all winter. But when you have a winter that goes up and down, cattle inside, you have a really hard time regulating the barn to keep it at that nice temperature that they want. So they end up with pneumonia or other respiratory diseases because of the warm and cold. It's hard on them, it's hard on the calves. Outside, cows can be outside in 40 below weather and not mind it a bit. Got a nice warm coat, snow doesn't really bother them, they just shake it off. But you get wet, rain, warm, cold. That's really, that just sucks it right out of them. They eat a lot more to try and stay warm. So they're not putting any condition on. They're just basically eating anything in sight to stay warm. So then you have things that would normally die here in the winter. Not dying, so parasites, um, any kind of diseases that would normally, they would just freeze out and you'd be okay for the next year and start over again. They're not doing that when it's a warm, cold winter. Last winter was really hard on the animals. They were either in mud up to their ears or they were frozen. And sometimes that was within 24 hours. So it's, it's difficult for them, and it's also difficult for any crop. So if you have, uh, say, an alfalfa field, and you've got warm cold, and that field is now covered in water, and then it freezes, it smothers it, just like it would your lawn or anything else. But an alfalfa field at $200 an acre to plant, you really don't want it to do that. We've always had cycles. The only problem is now, these cycles seem to happen within a few days of each other. Blue-green algae stinking up our lakes and killing fish. Increasingly dangerous heat waves risking lives every summer. Slushy winter weather. This is just a glimpse into the very real ways in which our climate is changing. For Post Media, I'm Tom Spears.